Good evening, um, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Revere. This is the uh, October 22nd, 2012 meeting of the City Revere City Council Zoning Subcommittee. This evening, we have two items before us on the agenda. Uh, the first being uh, item number C-12-10, uh, Lighthouse of Revere, Inc., 204 Proctor Avenue, Revere, seeking permission from the Revere City Council to construct a two-story addition to a pre-existing non-conforming use <clears throat> as a nursing home within the RB district on lots 1A, 1B, 2B, C at 204 Proctor Avenue, Revere, Massachusetts. Um, we will ask the proponents, the proposers, to please speak first, and anybody who has any other comments may speak thereafter. Please uh, approach the podium uh, pressing the speak button or the talk button and state your name and your address and your uh, relationship to the proposal. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anthony Viverito. I'm uh, from the architectural team uh, representing our client, uh, Lighthouse at Revere on 204 Proctor Ave. Um, what we have uh, on these boards tonight, uh, just to give you a quick overview of the project, uh, we're proposing to construct a two-story uh, addition where the current existing community uh, building is here on the uh, front elevation of the building and a three-season porch that's wrapping the uh, uh, also the, the side of the, uh, of the perspective here. Um, the uh, total uh, square footage um, that we're adding uh, through this uh, addition is roughly 12,000 square feet. Uh, it's about um, 2,800 square feet larger than the existing community building, and you're talking about the footprint, the first floor footprint. And um, the uh, purpose of the addition is to add uh, 12 additional beds to their short-term care facility that's currently on the second floor of the building. Uh, we will be decompressing that floor so that the net uh, add of beds at the end of the day will still, the facility will still remain a 123-bed uh, nursing facility. Um, programmatically, uh, we're also adding, we'll, we'll be adding a community space on the ground floor, in addition to dining and, uh, for, and a function room as well. And um, the PT and OT space uh, currently on the ground floor of the building will be expanded, including some storage for uh, the facility manager. Uh, the use of the space is um, for the nursing home. Um, so it's a continuation uh, of the uh, current use. And uh, the lot coverage, uh, we've gone before the board previously. Uh, we had exceeded, uh, we got a variance approved uh, because we exceed the lot coverage with the addition uh, by 5%. So in a nutshell, that's the, uh, that's the project. show you the so the colored uh, portion here this is the west this space of the building is the west side and the, the residential lots directly across um, from us the, the main facade of the building is the north face of the building and so these colored areas here show you the footprint of the new addition would tear, will tear down the existing uh, one-story addition dining area. <coughs> that's, that's all I have. Um, any questions from the uh, subcommittee, which reminds me, um, Councilor Correggio, Councilor Giannino, uh, Councilor Ganasso are here, Council President Penta, Councilor Patch, Councilor Novoselsky are with us this evening. Um, Council Guanasa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the area I represent in Ward. It's crazy as it might seem. The people from Ward 4 vote at Lighthouse, but in fact, it's physically located in Ward 3. And so you have somewhat of a responsibility to the Ward 3 people, and 
in my nature of my question is that I've had a couple of calls in reference to the parking situation at that site. Bearing in mind now that there isn't a person in this community that would suggest that the lighthouse isn't the number one nursing home in the, in the, in the state. There's no, there's no question about that. But I also have responsibility to hear out the concerns of the neighborhood, the people who mostly, mostly are affected by this. And, and their concerns are very strong in terms of, when you made mention of the additional space in the, in the brown located building, that's the area in which they were talking about. That's going to take up quite a few additional spaces uh, on the street. Is that not? No. Is that going to take away or from the site? No, no, is no. the site, the, f the footprint of the site is the same as it is now? No, the footprint of um, the, the, footprint of the site um, is shown here in white. This is the existing building. So we will be uh, adding in color here, this is the three season porch, so that expands the footprint of that corner of the building. And then on the west, uh, northwest, this is the west elevation. Uh, the existing footprint of the building of the one story structure is something like this, right on the end. So it's within the lot boundaries. Uh, okay. So that, that, that and you, you also put my mind to rest when you also stated the 123 beds is the exact same amount of beds that currently in, on, on that, site, so we're correct. not looking for additional visitors and stuff like that because you've already got 123 that beds. Staffing, our biggest problem at Lighthouse is, is space. Mm -hmm. we run out of it. Right. Uh, Bill. Uh, Bill Rich, Nine Woodbury Drive, Beverly, Mass, uh, representing Lighthouse Nursing. Uh, we're so tight and confined for space nowadays. Uh, rehab, would like to bring rehab up to s today's standards and looking in the future for you know another 10, 12 years. Right. Uh, so staffing levels, the number of cars won't increase. We just need more space to do what we would like to do with our rehab population. Right. The additional beds, there's 12 additional beds in the new footprint. Again, we'll be decompressing the existing second floor and making singles instead of doubles. So resident population will increase. And you will not be taking any footage away from the from uh, off street parking for any no, residential none, wh none whatsoever. Well, that answers my question. And, uh, you know, again, the individual who was, was speaking, they're speaking very highly of Lighthouse uh, and its facility and, and the type of care that people get there. But, you know, if you're a neighbor and you, oh, it, right. no, totally what, no matter what great deed you're doing, <laughs> yeah. if it's disturbing them, it's not good. That's so, right. And so we look forward to you continuing being a good neighbor and with we, the neighbor. We try very hard for that. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor Guanazzo. Councilor Corrigio. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Reardon. A lot of my questions have been answered. Uh, my major concern was parking issues in the area there, and uh, as uh, Councilor Guanasso addressed the parking situation, I wouldn't have a problem uh, supporting the, uh, the additional uh, construction spaces. Um, I have to say the Lighthouse uh, Nursing Home has served the people of Revere very, very well. It's a first-rate uh, nursing home, and uh, they took care of my mother, and they did an excellent job, and um, I, I, I would never forget that, the, the, the work that you people do. So I would support you uh, 100%. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Zambuto. Now, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for being late. Uh, you know, I... Every time Lighthouse is up here, I go on and on about how it's the best uh, nursing home in the state, gets all the awards for being number one. Uh, most of my calls are from families looking for help to get into the Lighthouse nursing home. Uh, I think anything we can do to help them serve their clients better, uh, that's what we're here for. So I'm thrilled to support this. Uh, I hope they come back for another edition sometime. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Zambuto. I'd like to, in addition, I welcome Councilor Zambuto and Councilor Powers to the chamber. Um, any other councilors have any? Councilor Penta. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I just, well, actually, the Ward 3 councilor answered it. 
I did get a phone call from a resident that lives up there and they were afraid of parking. They said parking's tight now as it is. <coughs> but uh, the way it sounds is you're not bringing any more guests or anything else. How many employees do you have at? Uh, we have roughly about 160 employ full time employees. 116? 60. 160. Not, not, not in Revere, though. Oh, okay. All the employees right. of Lighthouse. Three right, three shifts. That's still a lot. 24-7. Still a lot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Penta. If I could ask you to just to orient that last um, depiction that you had there with the streets, it unfortunately does not indicate the, uh, the, uh, the, the streets on, on the uh, depiction so that we have a clearer idea of where we're talking about. The, the most recent one you held up there, it's unfortunately. Not that. That's not the one I'm looking for. First floor? Yeah, the schematic. Okay. That's the one. Now orient us with the streets if you wouldn't mind. Okay, so um, Proctor Ave Proctor is down running there. here, and Mountain Ave is on this I side. See. So okay. the um, expansion of the front corner, which would be the northeast corner, is yep. confined to that small area that you're uh, that you've depicted, they're not the entire length of the building. That's correct. Okay, and then the rear end is where you're going to do make them the part of the I should call it the uh, the uh, west, west. Uh, northwest end is where you're putting the most of the labor into. I take it. That's right. Okay. Now you mentioned something about uh, adding a function room. Uh, when you say function room, what is the intended purpose of that function room as far as uh, what kind of uh, events did you well, consider? Would be a dining room slash. It would be dining room slash community center. I see. Uh, community room. Uh, when voting happens at Lighthouse, we have to kind of change the daily operation of Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Having a, a large community room with the dining room, and it actually has an accordion door, voting could go on without interfering with the normal operation of Lighthouse. Dining could be going on at the same time. The voting could be in the rear of the... Well, I guess the point that I want to make is that you're not intending to rent out the room or anything <laughs> no, like no, that. No. It's not. It's not going to be a no, public no, function no. function facility. No, no, no. Strictly we for the White House, a community room. It will have uh, large screen TV, HD, things that we actually have now. Yes, we'll Councilor Guanaz is very excited about the potential <laughs> for square dancing. Um, th that's that's one of the things I wanted to clear up. And what what are your plans for the existing um, area where the voting is done? Are you planning to use that as a day room or something like that? Yes, I see. That'll that'll stay as. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have any other questions from the uh, councils? All right. Well, I'll entertain a motion to uh, advance this. Ah, yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk, once again coming to my rescue. We do have. Uh, if I could have you back for one moment, uh, we do have uh, some. Uh, some recommendations from site plan review. Generally speaking, we incorporate these into uh, any permit that we vote on. And are you, are, have you seen these? Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to read them into the record uh, for the purposes of the edification of everybody listening. And uh, so this is from uh, site plan review regarding 204 Proctor Ave. It's dated October 19, 2012. Site plan review uh, has advised the site plan. Review Committee has advised us that they have reviewed the above reference site plan and special permit for the construction of 2,820 2 square foot two story addition to a pre existing non conforming use as a nursing home at 204 Proctor Avenue within the RB district. The following findings and conditions with, have been made with respect to this site plan. Number one, a 10 foot wide landscaping buffer shall be maintained along the side property line between the proposed addition and the abutting residential properties. The landscape buffer shall include the planting of a continuous row of evergreens, minim minimum height 8 feet, along the full length of the property line. The final landscaping plan shall be approved by the Site Plan Review Committee. Number two, any rooftop mechanical units shall be located at the furthest point from the abutting residential structures that shall include noise baffles. Are you intending any uh, rooftop uh, uh, mechanics? Yes. We'll have a couple of RTUs for the new addition. Okay. Uh, and uh, that came up the last time we were in front of the board. Right. Um, so where, where will they be located as far as on that plan is concerned?
the gray area indicates the extent of the roof and right. the stair tower. Uh, they'll be clustered uh, closest to the building on this side. This is the residential and uh, right. reference to the 10 foot buffer is along this side of the yep. building, of the addition. So and they to, they'll be set back a, a minimum distance of 10 <coughs> feet from the roof edge. So what about the uh, other addition? Are there any plans on the, the um, north the east corner? No, the, uh, this three season porch is, uh, will rely on, uh, would just be a screened in area. <coughs> so it's not, it's not actually mechanically ventilated. Okay. Um, and the, the room that's being, that it's adjacent to will be uh, serviced by its existing uh, MAP system. Very well. Um, number three, the final plan shall be subject to the appro approval of site plan review committee and fire department. Number four, an as-built plan including the accurate location of all utilities and structures within the site shall be provided to the building inspector and city engineer upon completion. So those, pro you, you've, you understand those and they will be likely incorporated once the full city council votes. I'll entertain a motion to uh, report this out at this point. Councilor Ganasso. Um, all in favor? of reporting this favorably, all opposed. The matter will be reported out favorably to the uh, City Council. I don't anticipate any, um, any issues, although there may be some questions from the City Councils that aren't here. It's unlikely, though. Uh, if you'd like to stick around, we'll be taking it up at the beginning of the meeting in about uh, 25 or 35 or 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. The second matter on the agenda this evening is uh, item C-12-11, uh, petitioned by Johnny Sorofin Thim, trustee of 212 Everett Street, nominee real estate trust 212 Everett Street, Revere Mass, seeking permission from the Revere City Council to expand the non-conforming structure and non-conforming use special garage to construct a 40 foot by 40 foot addition to operate a class two use within the same building as a special garage within the TED district uh, on lot 9 and part 22 at 212 Everett Street, Revere, Massachusetts. So once again, those in th the proponent, please uh, identify yourself. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Attorney Dan Buckley from Durham Ambrosio Brown, 14 Proctor Avenue, on, a, on behalf of the applicant, Johnny Sarafa. Mr. Chairman, this is in front of the subcommittee uh, seeking permission, as you stated, to expand the non-conforming structure, non-conforming use, particularly a 40 by 40 addition, as identified in the proposed plan, which would be behind a current uh, two-story uh, building. Uh, the building on the lot is 14,255 square feet, currently operating as an auto repair shop. Uh, the proposed 40 by 40 addition, which is on the Everett Street side of that property would be used to enclose uh, vehicles uh, under repair as opposed to what is currently used, uh, which is laying out on that part with the, that could be seen from the public. In addition, the request is to allow, uh, uh, by, by permission, a Class II license to operate uh, on that property, uh, particularly in the parking area uh, on the opposite side of the uh, addition being on the side of the American Legion Highway, but still identified as 212 Everett Street. Thank you. Um, City Council is Council Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you know, that uh, is in the Ward 5 area. Yes. Uh, I had occasion uh, this week to, uh, uh, this past week, to go with the building inspector uh, down to the site. And uh, we spoke of some different conditions, which we have a copy of here this evening. I also spoke with uh, Paul Neeland uh, over at, uh, he's the fellow that developed the uh, entire project down there at Wonderland. Sure. Uh, I haven't heard back from him yet, uh, uh, but I did speak with uh, John Mitchell and Jeff Saunders of the uh, Saunders Hotel Group, which have a hotel adjacent to the property. And uh, they, in fact, went down and took a look at it, as did myself. Uh, I really, uh, I, I think it in some way it would be an improvement for uh, a particular reason. Uh, right now, as a matter of right, they can park uh, cars on that property, I understand. Correct. Uh, all right. What this would do would be take away uh, all of that parking area and, and make the area it, itself uh, more attractive without uh, cars that are being repaired in a body shop, etc. 
They also own a lot uh, next door, which uh, they have uh, fenced in. They have a very attractive uh, white vinyl fence around it. So, and they also did uh, some uh, landscape work by putting a, uh, a wall, uh, if you're looking at the property, to the left. Yes. And one of the things that they did agree to uh, was to extend that wall uh, down past the, the, the property line where they have the uh, area where they store cars that has the fence. So uh, as long as that is done, and you understand uh, these are conditions, and they'll be uh, uh, looked at closely by the building inspector, as long Sorry. as that is done, and the, uh, there's another condition here that there's no parking on Everett Avenue of any cars that are being repaired. And uh, that, that also is very important because uh, this is an area that uh, the, the city, uh, Mayor Rizzo and, and myself uh, and my colleagues on the council are looking to see uh, developed and, and, and improved. Uh, you know, uh, I understand from speaking with John Mitchell that uh, that old gas station that's adjacent to the property down there, it's been closed for many years. Yeah. That, uh, uh, they put a bid in on that, the Saunders Hotel Group. They want to use it uh, for an entrance into their property, another entrance. So uh, I just, uh, that, that'll be another major improvement down there, getting rid of that old gas station, and uh, it'll dress the area up. So as, as long as your, your client uh, adheres to the conditions, then I would ask my colleagues on the council this evening uh, uh, to... Uh, Report that other committee and then vote for it favorably when it does come out of committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Certainly, Mr. Sarafin has reviewed. Thank you, the, Council. He has reviewed the uh, terms of the site plan review committee and doesn't have any issue. Any other councils like to speak? Council uh, Zambudo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. I'm, I'm very happy that the uh, ward councilor is in favor of this because uh, I thought it would be an improvement to the area and I was. Uh, Looking forward to supporting it, so I'm glad we're all on the same page now. Thank you. Thank you, Council Zambudo. Council Novoselsky. Thank you, Mr. P Chairman. Mr. Chairman, um, I did investigate this myself, and you know I saw the lot of land involved. And you have to realize that the full lot of land, the one lot of land that includes this proposed used car lot and the construction of the uh, of the 40 by 40 is one piece of land. And I'm just concerned, even though there's an abutting piece of property for parking, that there's not enough parking for both parties, because you're gonna have a, potentially have a used car, a class two license there, and also this 40 by 40 space. Sure. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be using this 40 40 space by, uh, for just storage of cars, or if you're gonna act, they're actually gonna be doing washing of cars uh, where the water runoff is going to be. So, you know, I have some concern about that 40-40 because we're trying to clean up that area for future development. You know, and I don't know how good of uh, an expansion of a, uh, an auto body shop and the inclusion of a class two on one piece of property would benefit potential economic development in the city. Sure. And I, and I do know, as, as part of the site plan review, uh, the number of spaces for the Class 2 has been limited uh, to 15. If that uh, does answer some of your question or resolve any issues you may have. Well, I know, you know, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, I know that originally 25 cars came in. Sure. And I, I spoke to you and I spoke yes. to uh, Attorney D'Ambrosio on it. And um, there's only 20, 21 sp mock, potentially mock spaces Correct. on the property. And I recommended 15, <clears throat> but I want to make sure that, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, through uh, one of the committee people, uh, and I know there's some kind of marked out for 18 spaces in item number three on the site plan review, but I want to make sure that all spaces are striped. When I say, when it says marked, I want to identify and de define marked as white stripes. Certainly. With, the, um, with, with two other little things. Um, one space specifically for HP, and um, two spaces for guests, because I know you're going to have customers coming in and looking, and you're going to have employees there, so we want to make sure you're defined as, as two spaces for employees. And that, and that would be for, and let me say, I know this is 
uh, apples, it's kind of apples and oranges, but that relates to the uh, class two. And I don't know what you're gonna do with the uh, parking on the uh, auto body. I know you plan on using the adjacent space, which is the, the owners also. Correct. So, you know, I have concerns about it. I'm willing to give the ward council wants it, you know, but I, you know, I do have concerns with, uh, of course, you know, I'm the class two uh, person that <laughs> drew up the, um, you know, the uh, home rule petition to expand into this area. But, you know, I still want to still kind of contain it without Sir. making it too obvious and uh, that the appropriate landscaping is done on it. Certainly. And, and given the location and with other commercial uh, businesses in that area, I, I feel that, you know, this class two would be an appropriate uh, use of that of that property. Continue, there's an enterprise there. There's an, an additional uh, commercial property to the left of it. So that's Con all I have, Mr. Chairman. Council Thank Nova, Nova Selsky, and, and the assumption that you'll be uh, suggesting this to the full city council as a uh, further... Uh, Restriction. Could you please just repeat? I understand that you want white pavement markings and a handicap uh, spot. What was the last thing uh, you said? Two spaces designated for visitors and two spaces designated for employees. Designated by a sign? Yes. All Appropriate right. signage. All right. I'm assuming that you'll be offering that, and I'm going to suggest that. I'd be glad to, Mr. Prove Chairman. this out that you do the. Well, it would st no, it would still be 21 spaces. Still no, there's 18. Uh, 18? Site plan review is offering 18. <clears throat> it's re well, recommending 18. But I know right now there are marked 21. There are marked 21 spaces. Well, it specifically spaces. says in site plan review's recommendation that it be limited to 18. Uh, the parking lot front it shall be marked out for 18 spaces. Right. It just says for 18 spaces. So if there's already 21 on there, you know, what's wrong with... Well, I'm assuming yeah. that if we, if, we, if we offer this, uh, the site plan review recommendations in with the entire special permit, that they will have to reduce it to 18 spaces. Well, they're only a recommendation, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry? So it's only a recommendation. So we you're can, suggesting we go back to 21 and then limit it and as limit suggested? It, still, still keep it at 15. All right, you can make that uh, And because we're, we're, appro we're appropriating spaces for our designated people and okay. still not harming his number 15. All right, very Knowing there's 16 on the spot anyway, because I did see the uh, <coughs> plot plan on it. Very well. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Correggio. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on those 18 spaces of parking, would there be any heavy trucking uh, parked there or just basically motor vehicles? M uh, motor vehicles. All right, thank you. Councilor Guanasso. It's my understanding that uh, order of conditions are when you receive a class two license that these spots have to be indicated by yellow, uh, by white markers. So that, that's already a prerequisite by uh, conditions of the, uh, being awarded a class two license. The only other thing I suggest is that, as the attorney has aptly stated, the area is conducive to that type of activity. That type of activity seems to be a niche down there and it doesn't seem to be harmful and whereas the ward uh, councilor has suggested that he spoke with uh, neighboring businesses uh, that mostly are impacted by this uh, it's beneficial to to hear that and want to go forward with some sort of a background to at least let us think and, and know it in a fashion that uh, what we're ordering is uh, one that's wanted in the area and one that fits in the area and Sorry. I think that you got both here so uh, I would be voting favorably, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gonasso. I'm going to allow Councilor Patch wants to speak. Then um, I'm going to allow Councilor Powers to address Council Novoselsky's recommended uh, changes to site plan review. Councilor Patch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to say that um, uh, I want to con uh, congratulate um, actually uh, Mayor Rizzo and Councilor Powers, the ward councilor. Uh, as people remember that site how it used to look years ago, uh, uh, it's come a long way. And I, uh, I'm going to, I'm in favor of this because uh, it looks like the gentleman that owns this property uh, is just going to improve uh, his lot down there. And uh, it'll be, 
the improvements will make it look more appealing to the, uh, to the neighborhood. And uh, I'm just going to uh, state that I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Patch. Council Powers, if you could address uh, Council Novoselsky's recommendations as to site plan reviews. Yeah, I, I really don't have any problem with his recommendations. The, the thing I want to point out is that uh, by expanding this building, you're taking away area where uh, cars could be stored for, for you know, body shop or et cetera. So you are uh, en enhancing uh, the uh, area, the beauty of the area down there, if you want, if you want to say that. Uh, in the, in the lot next door, he has uh, put a, a, a fence around that. It's all white vinyl. It's a, it's a very expensive fence. And uh, that is where the cars are kept for the auto body work. So uh, my, my understanding is it's going to be a, a, an improvement to the area. And uh, I, when I speak to uh, someone like Jeff Saunders, uh, who uh, uh, built a, a hotel down there and spent millions of dollars, and uh, he tells me, uh, John Mitchell, who works for him, tells me that uh, they have no problem with it, that they also might think it would be uh, an enhancement to the area. Then uh, I, I support it 100 percent, as I did the development at Wonderland uh, that now has uh, approximately 16 or 18 uh, stores in there. And uh, that, if we all remember what that was like with the old gas station, the old garages down there, it was... Uh, it was very unsightly, so I, I think this is a great thing that we're doing uh, by uh, supporting uh, this business down there. And I've always supported businesses when, when I felt it was right, and I'll continue to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Powers. With apologies to Councilor Gonzalez, because we're kind of stepping on his appointment subcommittee time. I am going to now read the uh, site plan review proposals uh, or recommendations on this proposal uh, regarding a, uh, a uh, one-story 40 by 40 addition to operate a class two use within the same building as a special garage within the TED district at 212 Everett Street. Site plan review recommends the following. One, a five foot wide landscaped buffer strip must be maintained along the full frontage of the property encompassing lots nine and 10 along Everett Street with the exception of the driveway entrance to the proposed garage addition. This landscape buffer shall include the planting of a minimum of six two and one half inch minimum caliper Chanticleer pear trees and should be maintained by the property owner. Number two, there shall be no outdoor storage of vehicles along Everett Street. And number three, and I'm going to read as uh, recommended by Councilor, uh, Councilor Novoselsky, uh, actually, let me read the site plan reviews uh, recommendation. The parking lot in the American Legion Highway frontage shall be marked out for 18 parking spaces, and no more than 15 of these spaces shall be util utilized for the class two use. As I understand Councilor Novoselsky's uh, recommended change to that, there will be uh, 21 parking spaces and no more than 15 spaces shall be utilized for the class two license. In addition, of the 21, there shall be one handicapped parking space. There'll be two designated by sign for employees and two designated by sign for visitors. In addition, uh, all of the parking spaces shall be marked by white pavement markings. Um, so I will entertain at this point a, uh, uh, a recommendation to report this out favorably re with uh, Councilor uh, Nova Celsius recommended changes if it's not acceptable to the uh, entire body, of course, Mr. that can Chairman, be voted down. Thank you. Mr. Yes, Chairman, sir. I have one question. Certainly. What's a Chanticleer pear tree? It's a kind of pear tree, I guess. I don't know. Okay, now I know. A Chanticleer pear tree. No, you don't. You don't know any more than I do. <laughs> do I look like a landscaper to you? No, I was just going to question. Is that if we go down there, I want to know. We'll, we'll have to ask Mr. Stringy next time That's we have him up good. before Chanticleer us. I'm sure he pear knows. Tree. Thank you, Mr. All right, if I could have a recommendation to vote this out favorably. Uh, Councilor Correggio, uh, all in favor, all opposed. Uh, this will be reported out to the uh, entire body in about uh, half an hour or so, and I would anticipate that some form of it will be approved. Uh, I think uh, the only issue, of course, is whether Council Nova Celsius recommended changes will be voted. I anticipate they probably will be there. Seem to be relatively minor. Thank you very much for your appearance. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that concludes the zoning subcommittee meeting uh, for October 22nd, 2012. The appointment subcommittee meeting will be again immediately, I'm sure, Council Granasso, and uh, the uh, Revere City Council will adjourn on at 6 o'clock tonight. Thank you.